Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate confirmatory factor analysis using R. The data for this particular example comes from this article right here at the Plus One site. And if you go to this link right here, you can download a copy of the article and a copy of the data. The data is actually contained in a supplementary file and both the article and the data are basically open source so that's a nice thing uh, about this particular site so what I've done is I've converted the data file from SPSS into an R data file uh, that you can download at this link right here and I'm gonna make links to the article and the R data file uh, available underneath the video description I'll also make available uh, as a link the uh, text file that you see opened right here so the data are saved in a data frame called epistemic sub 2 and this is a capital S right there. So let's take I've already uh, you know downloaded the data so it's ready to go. Let's just take a quick look at the data by using the structure function. So what we're going to do is type in str and then we'll type in the name epistemic sub 2 and there you go. So you can see our data frame, it contains 746 observations and all of these are, uh, these variables are basically items from the survey or most of them are items from the survey. So uh, the way the authors proceeded was is that they took a larger data set and they randomly sampled uh, two subsets out of that larger data set. The first subsample was essentially used to perform exploratory factor analysis. The second subset was used to perform confirmatory factor analysis. So we're going to be working with that second subset. So the next step in all this, what we're going to do is use the library function to call up the Levine package. So you do need to make sure that you have Levine installed before you do this. Otherwise, um, you're not going to be able to, to analyze the data using Levine. So if you've already installed it, great. If you haven't, you're going to need to. Um, and then once you've installed it, you don't have to re, you know, keep reinstalling it later. So I already obviously will have it installed, so I'm going to use the library function to call it up. So I'm going to type in library and then Levine inside parenthesis, and so now it's ready to go. So next, what we're going to do is we are going to specify our model. So you'll notice right here I've got model. This is just uh, the name of an object that I'm creating that's going to contain all of the model specifications. Um, so it's an arbitrary name. You'll see that we have an arrow, which is just a lesson sign followed by a hyphen. And then you'll see a quotation mark here, and there's a quotation mark here. So the entire model information has to fall between those two quotation marks. So you'll see on this line I've got IA, OA, and SC. And basically these are the factor names. Um, you'll see that I've got an equal sign and then a tilde that follows equal, uh, following each of those factor names. And then you can see I've got CE3, CE5, CE8, and so forth, all separated by plus signs. And those are the names of the variables that appear in the data frame. So make sure that, uh, that you are correctly um, spelling out uh, the, the variable names as they appear. Otherwise, you'll have an error message. So at any rate, what's going on is that we are specifying all of these variables as indicators of uh, the IA factor, which is basically innate ability. Um, we are using these variables right here as indicators of omniscient authority, and these variables right here as indicators of simple and certain knowledge. And you'll notice that I kind of uh, created little comment lines right here for each of those just to remind myself what those factors were meaning. Now, before we move on, you'll also see that I've got CE3 and then two tilde signs and then CE8. And when I'm running the uh, factor analysis, what this is doing is it's specifying a correlated error between the CE3 variable and the CE8 variable. So that's basically all there is to it. So just keep in mind, when uh, in the Levon syntax, anytime that you want to specify uh, covariance or correlation between two variables, you'll be using the two tilde signs. Also, if you wanted to use uh, to compute a variance, uh, for a variable, then it would just be the name of the variable, uh, two tilde signs, and then the same name of that variable. But um, basically, there's no need to do that in this particular case because we're going to be using the CFA function. Um, and so certain defaults are going to kick in that where it's going to estimate the variances um, of the errors for each of the indicator variables. 
So once again, just uh, as a refresher, make sure that everything appears in terms of the model between the two uh, quotation marks. Down here, we're going to use the CFA function associated with Levine. So inside the parenthesis, we have the name of the object that's containing the model information, followed by a comma, and then the data argument, which we're going to set equal to the name of the data frame. And so by doing this, um, it's going to allow R to find the variables that we're using in our analysis. So all of this is basically running the CFA model, and then here, what we're going to do with this arrow, we're just saving the information into an object that's called fit. So again, that object name is just is uh, arbitrary, but that's what I'm going to call it. On the next line, we're using the summary function, uh, and inside parenthesis, I'm typing in fit, which is the name of this object right here, so I can get all of my output. I've got fit.measures equal to true, so I can obtain the um, various global fit uh, indices, and then I've also got standardized equal true, which is basically used to obtain standardized factor loadings in addition to the unstandardized loadings. So let's go ahead and I'm, what I'm going to do is just copy all of this and paste it into R uh, to expedite things and to minimize the likelihood of any kind of errors. So I'm going to paste this in right here and hit enter, and you can see that we have a little bit of an error right there. And the reason was uh, when I hit the enter button, I also inadvertently uh, typed a period at the end of this line. So let's do this again. Uh, we're just going to uh, type in enter right there, and there you go. So let's take a look at our output. So you can see first off we have the chi-square goodness of fit uh, test value right there. There's the degrees of freedom and the p-value. So historically, the a significant chi-square uh, test value would be taken as an indicator of lack of fit. Uh, but we all know that chi-square tests are impacted by sample size. And given that um, SEM tends, is going to generally be a large sample procedure, we tend to use it with large samples, um, quite often this test is going to be statistically significant, uh, even if the lack of fit is fairly uh, small or modest. So we generally use other indices um, in order to make uh, the determination nowadays. So uh, much less weight is given to the chi-square test than uh, previously. So we have, first off, we have the uh, CFI, the Comparative Fit Index, and the TLI, which is the Tucker-Lewis Index. Uh, in other packages, it's referred to as the non-normed fit index. So values that are 0.95 or above are typically considered um, very good fit. Values that are 0.90 or above are generally considered indicative of acceptable fit. So both of these values are low relative to 0.90, and so that would be an indication that we have uh, lack of fit. On this line down here, we have the RMSEA, or the root mean square error of approximation. So uh, values that are 0.05 or below are generally considered indicative of close fit. Values up to 0.08 are generally considered acceptable. Um, we also have a P-close test of fit right here. Uh, so if this is non-significant, then that would be taken as an indicator of close fit. We uh, have down here the standardized root mean square residual. That's the R SRMR. And values that are 0.05 or below are generally considered indicative of a well-fitting model. And you can see that is the case right here. So we have really kind of a mixed bag of evidence when it comes to evaluating the overall fit of this model. The uh, CFI, the TLI, both are suggesting uh, lower fit or less than optimal levels of fit. The RMSCA and SRMR are both indicating more close fit. As we scroll down, we can see we have the latent variables uh, that are given right here. There's IA, OA, and SC. And you can see uh, there again we have our equal sign followed by a tilde, which is taken uh, to mean that uh, all of these are indicators of that respective factor. So you can see the first factor loading for um, or the first variable that was included in our syntax as an indicator was fixed to one, and that is used to scale those latent factors. Uh, so you can see that there's no estimates, uh, no standard error Z value or P value associated with those, but we have estimates for the, all of the remaining loadings. Uh, and you can see that the P values for all the loadings uh, in this particular analysis are all uh, indicating that uh, significant factor loadings. In this last column right here, we have uh, standardized factor loadings and um, 
these uh, are basically analogous to the loadings that you might see within a standard uh, EFA um, rotated loading matrix, for instance. So uh, right now, because all of these, um, these uh, factors, uh, the indicators are loaded onto a single factor, even though they're correlated, these would be essentially the correlations between each of the indicator variables and those latent factors. Uh, now if we scroll down you can see we have covariances so you can see we have IA and OA so you can see right here we have two tilde signs this is estimating the covariance between uh, innate ability and omniscient authority so there's a covariance right there you can see it's statistically significant um, and then you have IA and SC right here there's the covariance estimate and significance level um, over here, these would be essentially the correlations between the two factors. So this is a correlation between IA and OA, and the correlation between IA and SC. Uh, then we have OA and SC. This is a covariance indicating, and, and we have statistical significance there, and the correlation between those two factors is 0.221. Uh, up here, you can see we have CE3 and CE8, so we have the covariance uh, between those two um, the errors associated with those two indicator variables. And uh, so this is the covariance right there, uh, significance level, and then over here you can see that we have essentially the correlation between uh, the errors. Uh, next we have variances for the errors for each of our indicator variables, so CE3, CE5, all the way down to CE22. And then you can see we have the variance estimates for IA, OA and SE factors. So these are the variance estimates for the unstandardized solution. Uh, in the standardized solution, uh, the variances would be one for each of those latent factors. Now the analysis that we performed uh, uh, thus far, or what we've performed thus far, basically assumes that our indicator variables are continuous. So if it's the case that you want to treat the indicators as ordered categorical, which is uh, what sometimes folks might uh, want to do with uh, Likert type of uh, uh, data, um, then in that case we can just uh, change this part a little bit, this uh, section where we're fitting our model, by adding in a comma and then uh, the ordered argument. We, so we set ordered equals to C and inside parentheses here we've got the names of each of our indicator variables which are uh, falling between quotation marks. Uh, and then each of those are separated by commas. So what this is going to do is run the model uh, treating each of our indicator variables as ordered categorical. And basically what's going to happen is it's going to use diagonally weighted least squares in order to estimate the model parameters and you also get robust standard errors. So let's go ahead and fit our model um, using the ordered argument uh, in this, uh, for this uh, particular data uh, analysis. So I'm going to copy all of this and paste it into, uh, our, into uh, the program and there you go. So this is what it looks like right here. And now what you'll end up with are both uh, standard uh, estimates or standard goodness of fit measures uh, as well as robust uh, measures. You can see up here where it says estimator, it's using diagonally weighted least squares. And if you scroll down, you'll see where it says standard errors, it says robust uh, .sem, so indicating that the standard errors are robust standard errors. And basically, uh, the interpretation of the uh, loadings are pretty much the same as, as what I've described previously. So that uh, pretty well concludes this video demonstration of confirmatory factor analysis using uh, the R package Levon. So I appreciate you watching.